Hi, I'm Brian Trenchard-Smith, and this is Trailers from Hell, and I'm going to talk about Devil Ship Pirates. In August 1962, box office figures on Hammer's current release, The Pirates of Blood River, came in, and it was a smash beyond their expectations. So they said, we got to make another pirate movie. Thus, Devil Ship Pirates was born. Like many studios anxious to cash in on an apparently winning formula, they spent too much on the next one. The concept was still to make a land-based pirate movie, but this time there was going to be a real ship, not just stock footage and a matte painting. So they built a replica of the Golden Hind for the princely sum of £17,000, a lot for Hammer. Anyone who's shot on the water knows how the simplest things can go wrong. And they did. At one point, ballast shifted due to the arrival of six heavy stuntmen, and the ship capsized, pitching crew members over the side. Witnesses said it was a miracle nobody drowned. This was the English Channel in the year 1588. When the, the opening narration declaims about the battle against the Spanish Armada in 1588, while stock footage plays of clearly Napoleonic-era warships slugging it out. Color footage of Tudor-era vessels was rare. They had to take what was available from the library of their distributor, Columbia. I can hear the producer now. Hey, nobody knows the difference. And for the boy's own audience at which the picture was aimed, he was probably right. For a low-budget company, Hammer's art department were incredibly talented. Their back lot could turn from Caribbean outpost to Transylvanian town to Tudor village as needed. The costumes on Devil Ship Pirates were colorful, if a little pristine, as if there were dry cleaners on board the Armada's ships. Crew, if any one of them lets slip what really happened to the Armada, I will personally cut out his tongue. Starring Christopher Lee as the infamous master of the Diablo, the Devil Ship who fooled an English village into believing the Spaniards were their conquerors. I intended a peaceful occupation, but you have made that impossible. I will give you one warning only. Like Pirates of Blood River, the story concerns an isolated community taken over by ruthless outsiders. And who better to command the pirates than Christopher Lee, who once again dominates proceedings. What a life this remarkable man has led. Coincidentally, he went to the same school as I did 20 years before me. He also joined the fencing club, so he was always good with a sword. Peter Diamond, the fighter ranger, said he didn't have to teach Lee a thing. Even in his 80s, Lee did much of his own fencing in Revenge of the Sith. Among other interesting trivia, Lee witnessed the last public execution to be held in France when Eugène Wiedemann was guillotined in June 1939. During World War II, his skills in six languages got him recruited by Royal Air Force Intelligence, where his activities still remain classified. He is the step-cousin of Ian Fleming, and was even suggested to be the first Bond. He eventually played a Bond villain in The Man with the Golden Gun. Lee has had roles in 266 movies and counting. What more can an actor wish for? Devil Ship Pirates had less action and is not as rousing as John Gilling's Blood River. But Christopher Lee refused to work under Gilling again after the Blood River experience. Those girls will be hanged. It is smoothly directed by Australian Don Sharp, who apparently came to the set with a rigid shot list and knew to the inch where the camera would be placed. Hammer had hoped to rent the ship they had built at great expense to other movies, but the capsize had done so much damage they decided to shoot the climax for real and burn it down. It makes for a big finish. Mm -hmm.